Hey everyone, it's Creative. Today we're going to play Bant Humans. This is my favorite deck. I love Tribal and I love that I can play this deck as either aggro or tempo or control depending on the matchup. And though it's not the best of any of these three, uh, there's always going to be another deck that's better than it. I do like its dynamics and I think this deck puts on a lot of pressure while also making my opponent's deck less efficient. So let's take a look at what I put together. Now in my one slots I have four Esper Sentinels and three Noble High Arcs. Sentinel lets me start the game taxing right away, and Noble ramps me and helps me with my aggro plans. In my two slots I run four Thalia Lieutenants and three Luminarch Expirants. They both help me aggro. I also run three Thalias and three Unsettled Mariners as they both provide a taxing effect, though it is significantly different in the ways that it happens. Uh, I like to double up on both of my effects that way I ensure that I can enact one of my game plans. In my three slots, I run three Elite Spellbinders, which is a nice attack with Evasion, and it also continues that tax theme. I run four Reflector Mages, which are my only form of removal, but it's pretty good. It gums up my opponent's plans. It might even be the, the thing that helps me win a game on turn three or four, uh, so I really, really like that card. Uh, I also run three Renegade Rallyers, which can immediately get me one of my two drops that may have died the turn before. And if I don't have any two drops to get, I can use it to uh, ramp. I can get that fetch land that I use to put him into play. Finally, I run two Hamlet Vanguards because he's a beat stick that isn't easy to remove in a deck that is already taxing. Uh, to provide my deck a little bit of resilience, if my opponent can weather that early game, I run four Collected Companies and two Elspeth Resplendents. I mean, I've won a ton of games with a well-timed Coco, so I love this card. And I'm really starting to like Elspeth helping maybe give uh, one of my key pieces a form of evasion just to help me finish off a, a, a clean game. And then being able to dig seven card deep, cards deep for an answer has been really helpful too. Now in my sideboard, I run one Cathar Commando and one Outcast Liberator for key artifact and enchantment destruction, like an Ensnaring Bridge or a Blood Moon. I run two Kataki Wage War for Affinity. Uh, I use all three of these cards to help me against Hammer. Uh, they're not, you know, silver bullets against Hammer, but they can uh, help me, you know, steal a game. I run two Draineth Magistrates for Living End and Rhinos. I play Lavinia for much of the same, but she also has the added benefit of helping against Tron and decks that like to use Fury and Solitude early. Uh, I've won some games just because my opponent doesn't understand how she works try to play a Fury and it gets countered. So that's always really satisfying. Uh, I run three Sanctifier Vex for Burn and Is It. I run two Rest in Pieces for Is It Also. And I also use it for any other graveyard strategy that's outside of Black Red, kind of like a, a Dredge. I know they use Black, but they also have this annoying red and blue card, or green and blue cards I like to get rid of. Uh, finally, I run two Touch of the Spirit Realms in case I need more shots at a key piece of removal. It also has the added benefit of being found with Elspeth. My land base is three Counter Souls, four Flooded Strands, two Windswept, uh, Windswept Heaths, two Temple Gardens, two Hollow Fountains, two Besages who endure, uh, five Plains, one Forest, and an Island. All right, game one with Bant Humans. I have a good hand here. I have two lands. I really need three to play the game. So we're almost there. And if uh, Thalia gets killed early or Thought Seized, I have a Rallier and a Fetch Land to get her back. So play my Plains and go. Then we see this Trium, which a lot of times means they're playing blue-white. And here I'll be playing my Thalia. Now this is always pretty good against blue-white because they like to play a turn two counterspell and this, pre, you know, this fudges up their plan. <laughs> Got Thalia out, so they go to their turn. This definitely would have been a turn two counterspell, but there's no point. Kind of lucked out that they didn't have a prismatic ending, I guess, too. So this means we're going to start putting on the pressure, going wide. You can see I have two Thalia Lieutenants, so I have a good, strong attack here. And if I can get, get them down pretty fast before their Supreme Verdict on turn five, barring any Solitude that might come out and kill my Thalia, I think we can win this game. Hit in for three. Then pass the turn. I've also messed up their turn three. A lot of times they like to play Teferi this turn, and they're not going to be able to do that. They might be holding up a counter spell here now that they can pay the extra one. 
continue to be aggressive even though this might get countered. Very cool. I'm going to be able to hit them for a lot this turn. But then he taps me. What a jerk. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to hit him for three. Putting him down to 14. He won't be able to Supreme Verdict this turn, so we'll see what he can do. My opponent plays Teferi. He pops up my Thalia. So this means if I don't put her back down, that Supreme Verdict will probably wipe my board. I am committed to an aggressive uh, attack here. I can't play like a tempo. I'm going to ignore Teferi. And swing in for... I think 10. I'm also going to put out Thalia because he'll need both a land and the Supreme Verdict. So rather than just give them the, the Supreme Verdict, I'll, I'll, I'll make them try to find that land. I hit him for 10. Put him down to 4. And now we just hope and pray. Opponent draws. And they don't have it. So good. I think that was a good choice on me to play Thalia. They need probably both. I'm sh I, I feel confident that, that they had the Supreme Verdict. So I took the gamble and I think it paid off. So we move on to sideboard. I don't really have cards for blue-white control. I think my deck lines up pretty uh, good against it since I'm taxing. Uh, however, I do have some cards that are pretty much worthless. I don't think that the... Uh, the Reflector Mage is that great. What am I going to do? Pop up the Solitudes and Snapcaster Mages. Give them a second shot at using them. I, I don't think that's very good. So I'm going to play these touches. They'll allow me to... I guess I could you know, temporarily remove a Teferi. But I like to use them for my opponent's spot removal. So when they go to Prismatic Ending Me. Or maybe use their Teferi's action. Or even Supreme Verdict. I can save someone uh, to continue the, the, the attacks. And a lot of times, like if I say blink a rallier, it's going to give me two people in my next turn to attack them with. So that's what I'm going to use it for. So my opening hand here is pretty slow, but I do have the caverns and I have elite spell miner, which can really mess up uh, a control player. Letting me take a key card at a key time. Hopefully I'll draw into some one or two drops. Uh, we'll have to see. My opponent starts out by playing a land they can't use anything for. And then I'm going to go ahead and play my planes. And I'm going to hold on to the Cavern of Souls until I really need it. Because I don't want them to play the um, the blue enchantment, which turns things into islands and turning it off. Looks like my opponent has a counterspell up. So I'm going to be using my Cavern of Souls next, probably. That is until they once again act like a jerk and tap me down. Oh well, that sucks, but good play on them. I'm just messing. So I have two two drops now, but uh, I'm not gonna be able to play them. So I guess it didn't really matter that I kept a slow hand. I'd probably be stuck in the same position. See what my opponent does next. Maybe they'll play it to fairy, but instead they miss a land drop, which is really, really uh, helpful to me. So I'll go ahead and play the Cavern of Souls, and then I'll play the uh, Elite Spellbinder to see what they have in their hand. And of course they have a lot of good stuff. I'm going to go ahead and take away their Teferi, or at least delay their Teferi, make it just as expensive as the other two Teferis, and then pass my turn. They get a, another colored land here, which they don't. Uh, they can get rid of my Elite Spellbinder, so he's a pretty good threat. I'm going to try to get him to use one of his Archmage charges, uh, Archmage charms, because I don't want them to draw two. I'd rather them use it to counter something. So I'll put out what I think is going to be a good threat, making my Elite Spellbinder stronger. My opponent thinks about countering, it looks like. really thinking about it, changes their mind, lets it go through, which I'm happy for, because now I'm going to play 
Unsettled Mariner because I'm playing the Unsettled Mariner, Mariner because he has a prismatic ending, and so Thalia isn't going to be that effective against him. At least this makes them uh, tap down to kill any of my creatures. I pump up my Spellbinder, and I'm going to swing in for four, putting him down to a healthy 16. Now my opponent could Supreme Verdict here. He has all the mana for it, but it doesn't look like he can. He doesn't have the card. So my next play is to just continue the press. I have control of the board, so I need to, I, he needs to do something to stop me from killing him. And it looks like he's doing a fire. going to kill my meddling mage. No matter, I'll swing with my elite spellbinder and my luminarch. Oh, and then he plays a solitude. I do not like solitude, but he's better than fury. <laughs> so I'm going to hit for an almighty one. Worst thing here would have been for him to have also have an ephemerate. I don't know if blue white uses a lot of ephemerates. And then I'm going to play a Thalia. Now I know he has um, a prismatic ending, so I want to go ahead and put on a little bit more pressure. I really love this card. Fits with the theme, adds with the taxes, even though it's just specifically with him, but it's also just a big body. And now my opponent has to choose. Are they going to use the prismatic ending to? Uh, kill off Thalia and the taxing effect, or is it going to, is he going to get rid of the, uh, the threat? And here it looks like he's going to go for the threat. I need to be aware that my opponent can bring out a play a, a Supreme Verdict at any moment now, so I don't want to give them uh, a chance to just wipe my entire board, so I'm just going to keep the pressure on with what I have on the board, and then in their turn, uh, play a uh, collected company. Opponent has six mana. He can play one of his uh, big Teferis, but surprisingly he plays the small Teferi. So in response, I'm going to play my collected company, see what I can get. Yeah, and I have some good stuff. Now I could have, I should have maybe uh, broke open the land so I can get uh, a benefit from the Rallier, but bad play on me. But still, I have a 3-2 on the board and two of these nice uh, Aspirants. He's going to pop up my Thalia. He's at 8, so I'm, I'm in a good position to kill him. I just need to uh, get a buff across the board. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I have 7 on the board, so if I can get 1 Lieutenant, I'll be in a good spot. So here I go, spinning the Roulette Wheel. And there I have a two of these lieutenants. And then at the last second, I go, wait a second. He could have a solitude. I don't need to try to overkill him. And I have the instantly mage, so this will protect me. And this will lock up, uh, lock up the game, I think. I can't think of what else, anything he could do right now. And I'll be able to hit him for eight. So that's it. So post matchup, I think my Bant Humans deck does a great job getting underneath blue-white control while simultaneously taxing the deck, knocking out a tempo, and keeping them from stabilizing. I think my draws can line up pretty well, allowing me to put in quite a bit of early damage so that even Supreme Verdict isn't really that bad for me as long as I have a follow-up collected company. I think I have plenty of ways to make counters really suboptimal too with Thalia and Spellbinder, uh, but... I do think I could have done better in other places. I need to remember to crack my fetch lands before I hit collected company so I can benefit from Renegade Rallyer, for example. Otherwise, I think I played a pretty tight game. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please remember to leave a like and tell me what you thought of the game. Uh, thanks for watching.